Hi. I hope everyone is doing well and fine today. So I'm on another live. I'm going to pick up my kids soon. But today, there was a great epiphany that happened. And um, I usually share this just because I know as a collective, we all go through very similar emotional stuff and whatever I feel that I work through and release or is shown to me and I, I spend the quality time to see it within me, then as I share that and I open up my vulnerability and what I've gone through and coming out the other side of it can be of service and of help for someone. So this has to do with the sacred partner, the sacred soul partner. Um, and interestingly enough, since I got divorced three years ago now, um, and like four years of knowing that that's, that's what's gonna happen. Um, so since then I was like only working on myself feeling myself, figuring me out. Like how many of you get this? Like figuring yourself out, being like, why so many failed relationships? Why like two failed marriages? Like what is going on? Why can't I just meet that true partner of mine? And just life can be pretty. I mean, it's happened to everybody. So I decided I'm done with all that and I need to like self-discover. And I did everything to self-discover, all the tools and the techniques that I had learned and I had used on my clients and worked with for 15 years on others. And prior to that, all the other stuff I had learned prior to that, because I've been doing all this self-discovery since I was 18, um, I decided let's pour all that into me. Let me do new things. Let me figure myself out. Let me find my inner harmony and my inner peace. So as I did that, I found my strength, I found my confidence, my self-assurance. I went through many painful experiences in between and each and every one of them opened me up more to myself, uncovered more of my beliefs, uncovered more of my shadows. And this has been my journey. And as I was going through all this stuff, that I was going through and all these beliefs and all these ways that I have been most of my life, not knowing, not being consciously really aware of all this stuff, I started to feel lighter. I started to feel there was more space inside of me. Even when, when sadness would show up and fear and despair and judgment and self-blame and self-doubt would show up, there was still, there was more space in me to observe myself and to get to know me through the shadow, through the limiting beliefs. I was starting to discover more of me and I was starting to accept all parts of me differently. And as I found a more peaceful place internally in a more harmonious space in a, in a, in a place where I could just surrender to source and be one with source, and as you know, this is, this is consistent. This isn't like I've reached something wow. And I don't think anyone will ever reach this utopic vision of who we're meant to be because every time we reach it, there's something else unraveling and opening up and new discoveries occur. However, like I think around a month ago, I felt something happened where I was like, I'm ready for my sacred partner. I'm ready to open up to invite my sacred partner into my life. And as I said that, I felt open and fresh and it's possible. Of course, my mind was in there like, you don't have time for this. Like, what does this mean? Like, you're so busy all the time and you're a mom with two beautiful kids and how is this going to work out? And I just, I'm like, a source is going to take care of it. Whatever that will look like, will look like. I'm just open for that kind of love. <laughs> Now, the interesting part is, is when that happens, that means that there are purges and releases within the body that will come out to give space 
for that to happen. And as much as I've always been aware of it, by then I was like, you know what? I've got it down to a T. I can sit with my emotions. I allow all parts of me to show. I am good to go. Ta-da! Not really, because what happened is the minute a declaration like that is made, but there is something inside that is afraid of it, that is like, do I want this? Is, is a bit like not in alignment with that decla declaration. The most beautiful thing happens. As painful as it is, but the most beautiful thing happens. All the resistances and the stories start to show up. All the ways in which I did not want to really meet my soul partner because that meant to me pain. Being with someone is painful, right? Like loving someone, allowing myself to open up. That's the first thing that showed up. Let me tell you, there are layers and layers that showed up and I hope this will be helpful for you as it was for me. And the layer of, oh my God, Loving someone and being loved by someone is painful. I don't want that. I don't want that experience. I am good the way I am. And so that little little version of me that was in so much pain came to view. She came full view and I was like, oh my God, there's a scared me in there that is like, stop it. I don't want to do this leave me alone. Your declaration has nothing to do with me. I refuse. I don't want anyone in my life. And so as I sat with her and I saw her in this dark room and I sketched it out, it's dark little hole and she's crying and I'm like, and then I started to write and journal like, where are you? And she was like, don't look for me. Don't find me. You've always rejected me. You've always put me through pain right? You've denied what I have been telling you, whether it's a yes or a no for me, and you forced me into it. So as I dove deeper, what's interesting is, which you may all relate to, or some of you might relate to this, is that I then recognized that all the people I've dated, all the people I've dated my entire life, the men I married, I was never in love with them. I was in love with the story that I built for myself. Why? Let me tell you why. Because from a very young age, I decided that I'm going to figure out the perfect formula to help and heal my mom and dad's relationship. I think because I can't remember anything pa like prior to nine years old unless I meditate and images come. But other than that, consciously, I don't have memory, like except through pictures from an album or stories I was told that I fabricated a memory. But in general, so I can just remember like at the age of nine where I was fully aware that there is like a strange dynamics here and it's very uncomfortable for me as a child to be in this family dynamics and I wanted to build harmony, I became, let's say, obsessed with the notion of figuring out the formula of happily ever after. Like, what does it mean? What do, who do two people have to be to be happy together? How does it look like? Like, what can I do for mom and dad to find and reignite their love again. I mean, they must have been in love enough to marry, right? But what went wrong? That was my thing. This is what I spent years of my life doing. So I would stop anybody I'd see, any couple, and ask them, are you soulmates? And if they said yes, whether they believed it or not, if they said yes, I would listen to their story. And I would listen deeply. What's he saying? What's she saying? Is he holding her hand? Is he touching her? Is he looking at her with love? Is she looking at him with love? Do they feel like soulmates? Are they happy to be together? Are they like, do they give each other the chance to speak? And do they listen to one another? Like I start to observe everything, their body movements, their eye movements, their stories. And I, you have no idea how many stories I have gathered since I was nine. Like I'm 47 today. 
I stopped gathering stories like four years ago, but let's say from nine to 40, I was gathering these stories. I was obsessed with figuring out the formula and it became part of who I am. Like I didn't even know that that's what I was doing until a few days ago when I was journaling and it came out. Like my higher self was talking to me and saying, well, you're following a formula because of this and everything, you know, and I just started to write and write and release and, and observe what's the truth. So since then, I've gathered information as to this is who the woman needs to be and this is who the man needs to be. The perfect formula from my gathering of information. I, mean, I would stop people in airports because I traveled so much. I would ask people in airports. I would ask people in different countries. So the information I have is from the world. I would ask my parents' friends. I would ask my friends. I would ask random people on the street that would be holding hands. I'd be like, they have the answer. So I gathered and gathered and gathered and gathered. I mean, there wasn't any human being that I would meet that wasn't a couple that I wouldn't ask that question. And all I was doing was getting information to find the formula, the perfect formula for soulmates so that I can bring the formula to my parents and have them reignite their love, right? And be the soulmates they thought they were. Like, I don't even understand it now. Like as a child, that was my thing and I, I lived with it as a fact. So the formula was as such, like the best stories and the best way people stayed together is that the guy really liked the girl at first. The girl was unsure. They became friends. He pursued her. She finally let in. It's, a, it's like a, a, a the movie, like, like a movie, like one of those romance movies, right? They become really good friends. He treats her like a queen. She falls in love with how he treats her and how he looks or if he does, if he's not exactly her dream guy, she would still fall madly in love with him and they would live happily ever after just because there was that kind of dynamics. So what I did in all my relationships was I built a story. So I would hold my emotions back. I would go for the men that liked me so much, like liked and pursued me so much and just saw me as wow, when I didn't really like them, right? When my intuition, that little girl that was crying inside and saying, you've always forced me into things that you didn't want, like I didn't want. But I would say, well, this is the story. This is how it works out. This is the formula. This is the formula where I have to talk myself into it. I have to like the person for who they are inside and not what I feel about them when I first meet them. Like not follow my intuition at all because that's the formula. And so what would happen is, and I do apologize to everyone I did and everyone I married that this is what I did, which I was unaware of, so please forgive me. But what I would do is, because of how much this person would pursue me and would see me wow and would really desire me and, and they would feel different around me and happier and better and, you know, they would just become these wonderful men like Beauty and the Beast. I would then talk myself into liking them and paint a story of the love story. So the love story would always, and, and when I was journaling, I would get every boyfriend's name and the story I fell in love with. So I would fall in love with the story and not the person because I wanted to test these formulas and see, and I would become obsessed with the person by then because I have fabricated such a beautiful story. Like, you know, like with my ex-husband, the story was, he loved me for 10 years. He proposed to me twice during the 10 years. We were only friends. I married someone else in between the friendship we had. And then finally I said yes to him after I experienced a horrible relationship. And then we married and we lived happily ever after. And he cherished everything about me because he desired me for 10 years. So this was the story. Now I remember very clearly with my ex, my recent ex-husband, there were a lot of times where I was so unhappy. I was miserable and he was miserable. We were miserable. I was miserable. But I would sit 
Like, we didn't resonate at all together. I mean, it was just really, I was, I was just dying in that relationship. I was becoming obese. I was like, I'd never gained weight in my life. I didn't even know it was possible for my body, and I did. Everything was wrong. I mean, I denied my intuition. I denied my unhappiness. I was hooked to the story. I was being treat I was being treated badly. I was disrespected. I was disrespecting. I was treating him badly. It was just horrible. It was absolutely horrible. Right? And I kept it going. And I I lugged it and I made it what I wanted it to work. And the only way I would is when I think of the story. He loved me all these years. He adores me. He wants to be with me and and all of a sudden I would fabricate the story and ignore the reality that I didn't feel for him. I didn't love him. I didn't love him. I didn't, I wasn't like, oh, for him. I was oh, for the story of us. And that happened with everybody. That happened with everybody. I was, I could fabricate a story and fall madly in love with the story, right? Like I would uh, watching The Notebook or any story. I could love, fall in love with the story and start crying, right? And so many people in abusive relationships or toxic relationships have fallen in love with the story and not the person because it's hard to fall in love with someone that your heart doesn't beat for, that you don't feel something for more than just falling in love with the story. So I was falling in love with the stories and I remember oftentimes I'd be with my ex and we'd be walking and I'd be in so much pain and I'd be so ashamed of myself and I felt that I didn't matter around this person. I was irrelevant. This person couldn't wait to get away from me. Like I felt all those feelings and, and to talk myself out of it. And like we'd hold hands by force. He'd like force himself to hold my hands. And I love holding hands and I love touching, but it would be something like they would do at the beginning, but not later. And that was a story, the story in my head, they loved to touch and they loved to be like me. So I would force myself to touch them and hold their hand because I had to live the story or then why was I with them? Why was I with them if I wasn't in love with the story, right? So that little abused me inside, the little me that's like, I hate you. You know, you've got me into relationships that you couldn't stand to be around and you fabricated the story and you got so abused and you maintained it because of the story was the one that was crying inside. And I remember clearly my ex always, sometimes I'd be narrating, narrating like, Oh, look at us, we're holding hands, we're walking down the streets and we're listening to music and we're so happy together. And you know, it's so lovely that we enjoy each other's company. And I would narrate a story. And now that after I journaled and I, I would narrate to make sure that the story is hard because the truth was it was a terrible relationship. The truth was there were so many broken aspects in it. The truth was neither one of us should have stayed together ever or even gotten together, right? And it was breaking my story. Every time I would see the reality of my, my immense pain, my immense suffering in the relationship, I would start to hype it up and speak up the story. And then hell would break loose and I would bring up the story and then we would fight and I would bring up the story, right? So I discovered part one was I was in love with the stories. How many of us are in love with the story more than the person? How many of us will deal with incredibly toxic relationship status? Will, 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 will accept so much crap happening to us in a relationship because we're in love with the story, the beginning story, right? But how can anyone love someone who doesn't love them? How can anyone love someone who doesn't treat them well, who doesn't respect them, who doesn't give them beauty, who doesn't make them feel beautiful, who doesn't accept them for who they are? How can anyone love anyone like that? And yet we do, or yet I did, right? Because I was in love with him or them. I was in love with the idea. I was in love with the story because I had a formula to follow to keep me safe from pain, to hold me back, to keep me safe from suffering the pain I observed my parents going through for being in the wrong marriage. So my whole entire dynamics was based on 
protecting my heart from pain, following a logical formula that I can talk myself to fall in love with, and not give myself the opportunity and the freedom to fall in love and face the unknown. It'll hurt a little lot. And the surprise was I was hurt every time. Like the formula didn't work because I was hurt every single time. It probably hurt me even more because I gave up on myself to live up to the story, right? And the disappointment. And I wouldn't even let them want to like, I didn't even want to see who they really were because who they really were would be people I would never be with. And every time they showed themselves to me, I would get so angry at them. Like, well, at the beginning, you held my hand. Well, at the beginning, you you loved being around me and you wanted to hear my voice and you wanted to talk to me. What happened? That was the story I fell in love with. But it's not who they really were. And every time they tried to show themselves, I would get angry because I felt that I sacrificed my dream. I sacrificed my love at first sight dream for the formula I've sacrificed what I desired to give them what they desired because by giving them what they desired, which was me, I could fall in love with them and they're meant to treat me well. Well, of course, they have to treat me well anyway, but they, but they owed me. They owed me to treat me well because I gave up on myself and what I felt and what I wanted because I was scared to feel something and so I left, fell in love with the story. Now I recognize that, and for the first time in a very long time, maybe my whole life, I felt deep attraction to someone and that person felt deep attraction to me. And I started to, I was starting to fabricate the story and I just kept asking myself, is this mine? Let me feel really me. What is my truth inside? And my truth was no. This is a very dear friend, that's all. And maintain the friendship, but this person has delights for you because you're about to open up yourself to yourself and see all your fears. And that was what happened. I had the courage for the very first time to say, you are wonderful, and this person truly is wonderful. And the little me is saying, this is not it, and I, I I promised her that I would value her and listen to her. And I went through a lot of pain because of that and a, and a lot of ah, upheaval internally, which then opened up something new. So after all this, I got, oh God, I fell in love with the story. I healed that. I worked through that. I allowed myself. I felt through it. I asked God to help me through it. And then something new showed up for me. As much as I'm in love with the story, and I realize I see it now, and now it just doesn't make sense how I was living my whole life like that. But then I saw another resistance to my sacred partner. And that was because he, I call him my sacred partner, my soulmate. And I, I called him in, but I'm scared. That fear is, oh my God, am I good enough for that sacred partner? They're called sacred partner. That means they're so evolved. They are the highest best version of them. So I need to be my highest best version of me to be with my sacred partner. Or then, or then I'm not good enough for my sacred partner. So, so many years I was like healing and working through me and trying to get me to the best place where I am in perfect vibration to my sacred partner because in my head, my sacred partner is perfect, wonderful, amazing. And I need to be perfect, wonderful, amazing to measure up to the illusion of what I have as a sacred partner. Ah! How many others are doing this? How many of us are waiting for that amazing soulmate? Assuming we're still kind of not good enough. You have to dig deep to see this. Because on the surface, of course I'm good enough. I've done all this. I do all this. I'm, I'm all this, you know? But deep down inside, as much as I want it, as much as I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe something inside is, you got to dig deep to find that stuff. Because honestly, when I just say it like that, everybody will say, of course I'm good enough. That's your mental. Go deep. What is inside that feels like, maybe this I have to fix. 
maybe maybe because I'm this, maybe because I'm still not happy being alone. Maybe I have to change this about me. Well, you know, I'm supposed to feel really happy on my own before he comes in so that when he comes in, I'm not, maybe I'm too needy, maybe I'm too clingy, maybe I want too much, maybe I need to work on this. And I had a list, I had a, well, only if I'm this and only if I'm that and only if I'm not so, intimate and only if I don't love intimacy so much only if I know what freedom looks like only if I whether they come or go I'm indifferent to it whether it's like uh, I need to first be a success in my career like this just mumble jumble was just I'm like holy crap if I have to become all this before I meet my sacred partner or my true partner I'll never meet them because I, I don't it, that's a lot that's a lot you know, that's a lot of me having to become something to measure up to this utopic idea of what my sacred partner will look like and how disappointing I will be for them. That's the thing. That's the thing. How disappointing will I be to them if I am the way I am? Since I haven't met them yet, then there must be something a little off in me. And everyone, the gurus and everyone says, well, you first have to know how to love yourself. You have to know yourself. You have to know how to be independent, to live alone, not to be needy, blah, 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 blah. They do list out all this stuff before you get to be in perfect vibrational accordance with your soul partner. Well, screw that. That's a whole bunch of I'm not good enough for this utopic person, right? I'm not even good enough for my own utopic person. So that's just rubbish. That's still the hierarchy. That's still, I'm not good enough until, right? That's still giving ourselves reasons why I haven't met him yet because there's some things that need to be worked out internally first. No, no, it just isn't the time, you know? This isn't the thing that's gonna happen now, you know? And they're not this magical being. So as I was sitting at the park, because this, this all was like unraveling through days, you know, because my system needed to integrate and digest the information and then it would open up and then I would ask source, let me see what I'm not seeing, you know, bring forth what needs to be seen within me and then it would come and then it would come, but it would come at gentle bits because I trusted that what needs to come is coming. I don't need it all now, right now, or I'll break down. I won't know what to do with it, but it, they were just like, Here's another one. Here's another one. And the next one was, I thought, I, in like the deep me, the deep, deep me, after I sat, I'm like, oh my God, my sacred partner is my God. Like once my sacred partner can approve of who I am, then we'll, we'll blend in really well. Like if I can get rid of all the other aspects of me that did work well in all the relationships I was in, I'm gonna ruin this one. I'm gonna ruin it because I'm just gonna be me and me the unhealed and me whatever, which is ridiculous. Now thinking of it after I healed and released it and cried through it, now thinking, because it was such a truth. The thing is with healing, the shadow and the limiting beliefs feel like such truths to you no matter how much your brain is like, but I'm good enough, of course I'm deserving, da, da, da. there's a truth inside that is blocking that, right? And it's not to like talk yourself out of it, but to talk yourself into the pain, be like, where is it? Show me, let me be present to that version of me that has these beliefs that I've completely like thrown a blind eye to and refused to look at because I'm supposed to feel positive and healed. Well, that's not part of, you know, that is part of the positive and healed. It's the grand opportunity, pouring rain outside, the grand opportunity to see that. That is the opportunity. It's not because, well, once I see that, now I can meet my, my sacred partner. That's just gone out the window for me. I'm open for it, I've left that open. Could happen in 10 years, really. But right now? The magic that's showing up for me is breaking me free. There's more space inside of me. I have more freedom to just accept that this is it for me. This is the best version of me right at this moment. 
and the awareness of my sacred partner is God, right? That was like, oh, I'm like, oh my God, he's just another human being, just another human being. And I'm just another human being. And then it shifted, interestingly, as I did that. And the next day it shifted into, well, I am someone's sacred partner. And then I started to just say it. I am someone's sacred partner. Exactly the way I am. Exactly the way I am. Flip-flops in winter, you know, jeans, dresses, makeup, no makeup, hair, laughing, sad, angry, anxious, you know, too needy, not needy enough wanting my freedom, wanting all the time in the world, whatever I am, started to tap. I am someone's sacred partner just the way I am this way. Just the way I am this way. Not better, not worse. Just this. With my quirks, and my, my goodness, and my badness, and my unhealed versions, and this, I am someone's sacred partner. Someone in the world has me as their sacred partner and is calling me in as much as I'm calling them in. And the thought of that shifted so much internally for me because then I could see my value and my worth and I was an equal. I was an equal to my future self. I was an equal to my higher self, all that striving. You know, I was just, I was an equal, not better or worse than anyone. But as much as I am calling in that sacred partner, and to me, when that sacred partner appears, I'll feel free and safe and loved and loving and and I want to just touch and, and talk and just share and like be in one another's lives and enjoy and have fun together and make plans together and just just integrate and just be, you know, like finally we've met. Like that's how I feel I want to be with my sacred partner. And there's a sacred, there's somebody who wants that too for their sacred, as their sacred partner. So all these Desires that I've been like, I need to be more indifferent. I need to not want to hold hands as much. I need to be, you know, more independent of them and not, you know, all of that stuff that has been taught to us in the program. Well, there's somebody out there who loves that, who desires somebody who's attentive, who loves to share and talk and experience and, you know, and, and, and who loves to like, talk and connect all day. I was told it was too much. That means I'm too much. But you know what? I'm not. And I wanted to share all this with you because forget all this healing world and trying to work on yourself and fix yourself and what are you doing it for? You can use this example for everything. I got to heal everything inside of me and I got to work it out and I got to figure things out and I got to learn all these modalities so that I can get success in my career. Is success your God? Is success your God? And if it is, why? What does it mean for you? Why are you less than the success? What does it mean for you? Is success your God? Is your sacred partner your God? Is a relationship your God? Right? Is losing weight your God? What does that mean? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to you? And why do all this work to reach what? And for what? When you start to purge and release those things internally, and it's all about you, like figure you out. Figure you out. What happens then? You're free. You don't have to become anything for anyone. Not even for yourself. 
Not even for that little self of yours that keeps saying, you're still not good enough. Well, you don't really matter. You know, all that stuff that we all go through. You're, you're, we're all the same. We all have the same beliefs and the same crap that keeps, we keep telling ourselves over and over again. I've done this work most of my life. I can just say most of my life I have. And there's still things showing up. I know exactly what to do with God. I channel, I psychic, I did. And there are parts of me that I like, that are allowed, I still, they're still coming out. <laughs> and that's okay. I don't have to be any better than what I am this very moment. I don't have to fall in love with a story to protect myself from feeling pain. I don't have to think my sacred partner is so much better than me and I am not good enough yet. That's why I haven't met him. And I have to keep figuring out how to be good enough to meet my sacred partner because my sacred partner is fantastic. Like the most, he's fantastic for me as how I am every moment of the day. And I'm fantastic for him exactly how I am. He's fantastic, I'm fantastic, wherever we are. Because he's not God and I'm not God for him. Because I am with God, he is with God, whatever that looks like. But I'm ready and willing to open up myself, to not fall in love with the story, to throw in the garbage all formulas for success, for relationships, for what healing looks like, for who I'm meant to be, oral formulas gone. There is no formula for happiness. There is just the moment in time now. And to allow yourself to just find peace with you and who you are today. Forget who you'll become tomorrow. Just who are you today? And just be with that. And when you need, because I reached out to my energy healer. I reached out to Kathy. And I heard it. Reach out to Kathy. And I did in the midst of all these days. You reach out to people. You reach out. You feel drawn to this person. This person you know, we're all here to help each other, right? It, I was telling myself, you got to do this on your own. You got to do this. on. You got to figure this out on your own. I'm like, well, I figured it out. However, I need help. I need somebody else's eyes, somebody else's intuition, somebody else's feelers to feel for me. You all get that freedom, right? Even if you're like the best healer in the universe, like I know I am fabulous at what I do doesn't mean that there aren't fabulous other people out there that I can reach out to. That's why we're all here. Everyone sees an angle from a different perspective. Everyone is healing everyone. I love Kathy. I adore her. You know, and, and she's amazing. So I'm leaving you today with all this. Write your notes, journal, feel into what I've shared. This is like the truth of all truths. And I'm sure there's more gonna be uncovered with that. And I'm sure there's more coming to the surface. This isn't it. However, I'm so grateful to God for showing me that which I had refused to see, for opening me up to me, for answering my desire to just let me see what is unseen for me. Let me see my beliefs. Let me see my shadow. That's all. And I asked for help from source and from the one person I truly trust in the field in which I needed help in. I love you all dearly. Take care of yourselves. If you like this video, press like heart, leave a comment, don't leave a comment, don't press a like, do whatever you desire. Take care of yourselves and I love you deeply.